Thanks. Labrit Damas, Labrit Kungi, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to make the joint presentation of our paper of my boss and friend, Calvin Salzman and myself, about the upgrading of the laser system here in, in, in Riga. Uh, we will do two, three things in our presentation. One will be short in numerical data. Second will be short in general. And third, I will not read the slide. I will make comments. So this is a view of our system. One meter uh, telescope designed and built here in Riga years ago. And this is a photo of one observation. Maybe you can see the green laser beam going to the clouds. So this is really how it's looking when we are working. The first question, why we are mentioning satellite laser ranging here? There are two answers. The short one, because it's photonics. The long one is that satellite laser ranging is helping in many fields of research, space uh, observation, uh, ground observation in geophysics, geodynamics, and so on. It's a system which is not frozen in time, it's developing, we're developing new applications, and it's really helping to solve many problems. And in many cases, for example, if you read in the news that the sea level is rising, that the underground water level in California is, is a minimum low, or that the uh, ice on the North Pole is getting thinner and thinner and thinner, those are space applications where calibrated and monitored using satellite laser ranging. And it's never mentioned that we are in the background and without us this is not possible. And the second question, why in Riga? The same, we have a short question because we are here, like the Everest. And the second one is, first, the Riga laser station have a very old history. So in laser ranging, not only the where you are measuring and how good you are measuring, but how long you are measuring, because when you have a long time series of data, you are getting more and more information with the time. There is a point in the presentation of Dr. Reglitis, and I will mention that we are realizing in, in, in real uh, time the reference point for the Latvian Geodetical Service. When you have a long series, every time this, uh, this international reference frame is updated, all the data is analyzed. So the quality of this reference point to be used in all the societal applications in Latvia is getting better and better with the time. So there is sense to keep observing in Riga. Also the position we are the, uh, how to say, the northern more stable station in the international system for the moment means that we are covered in an area when the satellite flight that is not covered now but another station and also because when the satellites are flying pole to pole we can make in principle more observation per day than another station. For example a polar satellite passing over Arequipa in Peru you can make maximum two, three observations per day. In Riga, the same satellite, if everything is working okay, like we want in the future, we can make five or six. So we have a better sampling for space mission. And this is helping the local economy and science and this system. So, moment, I think I have to go back. How to go back here? But what is the problem? and why we are inside Photonica. The same comment. The system is very old in hardware, in software, even the organization of the uh, workflow was when satellite laser uh, ranging was an experiment, not a service. The main point is that we have many old Soviet equipment we are beyond its lifetime. They could die in any moment. The second thing, because this technology is growing, there are new systems and uh, models who have to be put into operation to be competitive. Third thing, that we need better equipment for calibration and observation. 
And second, because of this uh, situation I told, this realization started like a long-term scientific experiment and not a, uh, a service, we have to modify by upgrading our organization the fact that we are only observing during the night. If the satellite could be seen through the telescope, we are not able to work in a regular way 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So, this is the uh, participation in the last uh, seven years in percent. The absolute amount is not so important because you see the Australian station is doing 14% of the observation, so it's pushing down the rate of causation. The important is the following. The leaders, they have up-to-date technology, hardware and software, and they have sufficient people to work practically 24-7. They are a session with good technical quality but with problems of sufficient people to work continuously. And a session, let's say, the, the bigger group who could and should be improved by hardware, software or funding for operation. And the second problem is uh, a Latvian problem. is the following. This is 15 years of calibration associated to observations. And you see, we have a very regular pattern, which is modulated by three factors. One, because of our position, the nights are very short, so we cannot make many observations during summer. In winter, the nights are very long, but because of the sun is on the south hemisphere, the air shadow is vertical, so we have many satellites, but we cannot see now through the telescope, so we cannot do the observation. Another factor is the weather. Winters here are very cloudy. So we have two seasons now, spring and autumn, where we made the, the top of the observation. If we were able to observe all the satellites by night, or night and sun observation by day, this, this will become more flatter. More passes, better distributed. So these are problems we need to solve. So what we have done up to now, because the upgrade and modernization is not over yet. First, we replace many old things. You will see in some photos at the end. We have introduced new technologies, especially in the security field. There is a problem now with laser pointing in an airplane. So we have to monitor the airplane flying over Riga to comply with the security requirement to improve the calibration and testing because we need to measure what we have doing and we are doing and what we have to improve to improve the working condition of the laser building improve the computers because they were quite old we have to recover all the know-how because the founder of the station uh, Dr. Lapushka died two, two years ago we have to improve all the hardware not only the electronics we have to make better analysis of all these segments of the system, how it's improved, how to do it, and to modify the software and the operation uh, paradigm of the system. And also there is something new for, for RIGA. We are calibrating many components using high standards. Second thing, which is not laser, but it's important, we have a new uh, Global Navigation System, GPS, Galileo and Lunar, for supporting the realization of the Latvian Geodetical Point. So this is not laser tracking, but this is really, really important for the future. So how we have been working during this upgrade? We have periods we stop working, we start putting things out and in and testing and so on, and when we reach some level, we do, uh, let's say, a testing period, and then we stop. Now we have stopped, we are planning in the next weeks to start again a regular season. So we are checking if everything we have done is working okay, and the second thing is the following, because we are realizing the Latin geodetical point, from the technical point and from the viewpoint of funding, we need to have a minimum of observation of geodetical satellites, especially LEOS 1 and 2. 
So for example, in this period, we, only, we not only tested all the modification, we did about 30, 31 lagging observation. So there is a new set of measurements to keep the geodetical point working. And we are getting funding for our, to, uh, our observers. Not sufficient, but we have a point. So this is the explanation what we are doing. Officially, in the International Laser Arranging Service, we are in the so-called upgrading mode. So the community knows we are playing, taking things out and testing. And when we set the data, the data is recorded, informed, we are operating, but it's in the so-called quarantine mode. The data is received, is analyzed, we get some background, but only when that we are out of quarantine, then all the data will go to the final archive. This is a normal. You go to the web page, there is always a list of about 10, 15 the session in and out of quarantine. <coughs> and we have a time flow problem because of the need of calibration and practical observation. We cannot say, okay, we will stop, we will change anything and switch on because if something is not working, probably that identifying what, is, what went wrong will be more complicated. And for example, the last upgrade will be the, uh, to put a new control software, but we cannot do this until all the new hardware and electronics is really working. If we cannot use the new software with all hardware or vice versa. So what we have done up to now, First, the time and frequency has been uh, passed to a radical upgrade. The internal calibration is much better. We did a presentation in Nocturnal about these uh, results. All the, uh, we are able to test things that we were not able to, to do two years ago. We have improved how the telescope is pointing to the satellite and the stability. And one thing, one thing I didn't put it, we have been able in the frame of secondment and the photonic uh, uh, program to make some very high level calibration system. For example, our new frequency uh, clocks using this uh, secondment. They, we have a colleague from the United States who was working in Germany at the time, now he working in the USA for Honeywell. He not only came here to help the modernization of all the time service, we sent our clocks to Poson and they were fully calibrated against atomic section clock. And we have a presentation about this. So the idea when Riga is finished, we will increase not only the quality of the observation, the resolution, the productivity, but we will be working with a very high workload possible all the night and during the day, if we get the funding for the observers. So we need, like our one colleague said, we need to win the Eurojackpot to be very happy. Of course, we have made some publications in our field. There are not so many uh, peer-reviewed uh, articles, only when it's practically a new breakthrough. We have regular international workshops, and most of the uh, Articles are presented there, they are uh, available and so on. So we have two during this period. We went through the secondment program, so we are fully supported by the Photonica project. Uh, we have three oral presentation and four posters in, in two workshops and one presentation in Nocturnal. Not all presentations were related to the upgrade. So we have uh, four, one poster and three oral presentation. This is the one about the calibration of the timing service. The presenter was in the So we have some results also available for the community. So I want to show a few photos. For example, this is a view of the laser system before the upgrading. Now this laser is working with the ion beam in Photonica, so we are not throwing the things far. And this is the system for sending the laser beam through the telescope, and this is the starting of the timing electronics. And this is the calibration, this was the original system, outside in open air was an optical coupling. 
with some mechanical and optical problem and this is calibration using optical fiber multi-mode. Now how it is looking? I don't know, the photo is uh, opposite. The laser, a single mirror because now we can move the laser for calibration. This is the coupling of the optical system also using single mode and this is exerting electronics. Okay. Time service before and now, including the new GPS and airplane controlling. This is practically out. Some tiny modifications are very simple. This is to keep the, tele the mirrors dry, the new antenna. And doing science, okay, you have the travel to the possibility to be in some places. And sometimes you have some hard problems. Because going to Japan, Calvis and myself, we have to be 24 hours in Finland. And this was our launch courtesy of Finnair. No, the VR is not so important. So this is everything since Paldies. First, the full photonica team. Second, to all our collaborators in Germany, Ukraine, and so on. And two special thanks. One to Dr. Uber, because he's the head of this big business. And the second to Academician Avery, because we have helped a lot with so many years of practical knowledge and everything. So thanks.